If you are someone who is planning on working with ayahuasca, maybe you have your retreat booked and it's coming up in the next couple of months, the next couple of weeks, then you have probably started to think about or do research into the diet. It is super, super important to properly prepare your body for this kind of deep medicine work. If you think of it as like a clean body, sets the stage for a clean spirit. And so it's really supporting you in facilitating this deeper healing work with the medicine. And as someone who has had many of my own ceremonies and followed the diet in different ways leading up to those ceremonies, and also as someone who has worked at an ayahuasca retreat center and so witnessed many different people come in and work with ayahuasca who either had very strictly followed the diet or maybe they hadn't followed it at all and varying degrees. I do feel really strongly that I was able to kind of unpack that and understand what makes a difference, you know, what things we should be eating, what things we might want to let go of in the days and weeks and even months leading up to the retreat. No matter where you look, every website, every retreat center is going to be saying something different. I know myself before the first time that I worked with ayahuasca, it was really confusing to understand like what I was really supposed to eat, what I was supposed to cut out of my diet. So that is my intention for this video is just to really support you in having a deeper understanding, deeper clarity, and just walking you through what will make the biggest difference because it, it can be challenging to follow this like 100% strictly to a T for months leading up to the ceremony. And you might not even have that much time before your ceremony. So let's talk about what you can do, how you can follow the diet um, in the way that will really best support you before your ceremony. So welcome or welcome back. My name is Danielle and in this video we're going to be breaking down in detail the ayahuasca diet in the time leading up to your ceremony. So we're going to talk about what is the ayahuasca diet, why is it important, and then go through the time leading up to your ceremony. So from you know a month or two months to the weeks and then days leading up to your ceremony, what you want to really be focusing on letting go of and taking a pause from eating in your diet and then the foods that will really best support you that you can eat leading up to your ceremony to achieve the smoothest work with this medicine to really support your body in purging before the ceremony in really cleaning your body out and what will support you in having the most lasting transformation long-term with this medicine. So let's start with what is the ayahuasca diet? And it's pretty simple. It kind of is what it sounds like. It is a, a breakdown of the dietary and also lifestyle factors that you want to follow in the days, weeks, and months leading up to your ayahuasca ceremony. So what we're mostly going to be focusing on in this video is the diet, the food aspects. That being said, there is so much that you can do to really prepare for your ayahuasca experience mentally as well as, you know, releasing different things in your life that aren't necessarily related to food. So I do have another video that kind of digs into the insights and tips for your ayahuasca ceremony, feel free to check out that. I will link it in the description box below. But for this video, we are mostly going to be focusing on the dietary aspects. So I would say there's a couple pieces as to why the diet is important. And the first one would be that the medicine is already starting to work with you before you drink ayahuasca. So this is a really, really important thing to note. Before you go to the retreat center, before you sit in ceremony, ayahuasca is already going to start working with you on an energetic and even a physical level. Like I myself have actually purged before ever drinking the medicine. And this is before I ever drank it. Like I had never worked with ayahuasca before. And the night before my first ceremony, I had a really intense purge. So she's already working with you sometimes months before the ceremony. And by starting to detox and purge your body of toxins and you know maybe processed foods and different things that don't really support a clean body and a clean spirit, it allows you to really work more smoothly with 
mother ayahuasca in the ceremony space itself. You will start to already purge it all out. You'll be releasing all of these different energies. And so in the space of the ceremony, it's going to allow you to, yeah, just really have a smoother process and fingers crossed, maybe purge a little bit less because the thing with ayahuasca is Yes, you know, a lot of people are there to really get into this deep healing work, this spiritual and subconscious excavation and healing and releasing of limiting beliefs. However, she has to really like get through the physical aspects first. So there is always going to be a physical purge before she can really get to that deeper healing work. And so the more that you can get that out of the way before the ceremony, the more quickly in your ceremonies, you can just get to that subconscious work. You can get to the mental and spiritual and psycho-spiritual aspects of healing that you might be really interested in getting to. And one last thing to note here is that it's not only supporting you on a physical kind of cleansing level, but this dedication to the diet shows ayahuasca, it really proves to the medicine that you are committed to this work. Like you are willing to take the steps. You're willing to put in a little bit of effort in the time leading up to your retreat, to cut back on the foods that don't serve you, to really fuel your body with these beautiful nourishing foods that do support you. And so it's just like this little bit of an extra um, dedication that you can show to mother ayahuasca that you are all in, that you're willing to do what it takes. And I definitely believe that this also allows for and supports you in experiencing a smoother experience with the medicine. All right, so let's get into the details. And before we talk about food, let's talk about something very, very important, which is medications. Ayahuasca is normally very safe. That being said, there are some medical conditions and then also medications that are contraindicated to ayahuasca. Four weeks prior to the ceremony, you're going to want to start to taper off of any psychoactive medications. And then three weeks prior to your ceremony, you're going to want to start to taper off of any uh, anti-anxiety or antidepressants such as SSRIs. So please, please work with your primary care physician and the retreat center to taper off of these medications responsibly. Let's get into the food. And again, I'm not going to just list everything off here. I am going to have everything listed in the description box, but I wanna just go through the key pieces that people tended to have the most questions about. So there are three things that I would highly recommend releasing from your life, from your diet and lifestyle prior to the ceremony. And those three things are pork, alcohol, and cannabis if you are a cannabis user. I found this really interesting, but of all of the shamans that I worked with, none of them, none of them ate pork. They all had varying degrees of different diets, but this really was the one thing that they had in common. And on a deeper spiritual level, you know, pigs are incredibly intelligent animals. They are very, very, very smart and they're hypersensitive and hyper aware of everything that is happening around them. So you can really look at this with all animals, but pigs, especially energetically before you are going to work with ayahuasca, it will really support you to not eat pork because there's a lot of energy that comes with eating that animal and you really want to do your best to release that prior to the ceremony. Uh, pigs are also not necessarily the cleanest animals in the world. You know, they will eat absolutely anything. So when you ingest pork, there's a lot that you are ingesting with that animal as well. So I'd really recommend giving yourself a full month before the retreat to cut pork out of your diet. That's a big one. And then alcohol. I don't think that we need to dive super deep into this. I hope that it really makes sense for everyone why it's good to take a break from alcohol before your retreat. Um, this is really interesting, but if this is not something that you've heard of before, I find this fascinating. So if you think of certain types of alcohol, they are actually known as spirits. And the idea behind this dates back and essentially says that when we drink alcohol, a part of our soul, a part of our spirit actually leaves our body and leaves us a little bit more open, a little bit more vulnerable for other energies 
or other spirits to work with us. And so it can be really, really helpful to not be messing with your energy in that kind of way before working with something like ayahuasca, such a powerful plant medicine. I personally don't really even drink alcohol anymore. Like every once in a while I will have a glass of wine, but I really prefer and choose to keep my energy uh, to myself <laughs> and really protect myself in that way. So try to take about a month, if not longer, if you can, but at least a month off of any form of alcohol before your retreat. And then finally, cannabis. Please, 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 if you are an occasional cannabis user, go ahead and take a month off. But if you use cannabis even more often, it can be helpful to take longer, to even take two or three months off of cannabis before working with ayahuasca. Both are incredibly powerful plant medicines. And because cannabis is so common, I think a lot of people forget what a powerful plant teacher cannabis is. So when you are working with so many different plants at the same time, it can really start to muddle the energies and get a little bit confusing. You can even think of it as like the different plants fighting for your attention and, and kind of clashing in terms of what they are teaching you. So give yourself a little bit of space away from cannabis if you are a common cannabis user and really open up that space to be able to work with and dedicate yourself to working with ayahuasca. Don't get mad at me. I know, I know how everyone feels about taking time off of cannabis, but I promise you it, it will really genuinely support you. So, you know, don't shoot the messenger, but take your time off of cannabis. All right, so two weeks leading up to the ceremony. Let's break that down. So number one is sexual activity. Again, don't shoot the messenger, okay? Don't get mad at me. Again, it just all goes back to energy, okay? So where our attention goes, energy flows. And if your attention is going towards sexual intimacy and that energy, it's, it's kind of taking away the opportunity for your energy to be directed towards that deeper healing work that you were looking to do with ayahuasca. So sexual energy is incredibly powerful. It's a beautiful, beautiful energy. It's just really important to take a pause from it and open up that space a little bit in the weeks leading up to your ayahuasca ceremony. So please do your best and two weeks before your ceremonies do take a pause from all sexual activity. A couple of other things to mention in the two weeks before would be spicy foods. And this really, um, has more of like a physical reason behind it. Spicy foods can just be really aggravating to your digestive system. And also, if you think of this from like an Ayurvedic perspective, spicy foods can really amp up your energy. And it's best in this time to allow ourselves to kind of calm down, to come into a more meditative and relaxed space before we work with the medicine. So taking a pause from spicy foods that could elevate that energy and also cause a little bit of digestive upset. So spicy foods and also ice, icy drinks, icy foods, so ice cream, taking a break from those super, super cold foods in the two weeks leading up to your ceremony. Cool, so let's get into one week before the ceremony. And again, I'm gonna go through this, but I'll leave it all in the comments below and I'm only really going to elaborate on the ones that people tended to have the most curiosity about, yeah? So number one is sugar. Uh, number two would be foods containing tyramines. So for those of you who do not know, tyramine is an amino acid found in foods. And the reason that this is important is because Tyramines can actually be contraindicated to the MAOIs in ayahuasca. So that can cause a little bit of an issue. I will list all of those foods below. It's a lot to actually list off on here, but do just understand that this one is really important. So please do your best to cut out any foods containing tyramines. Red meat, animal fat, dairy products, all of these things we want to start to slowly cut out in the week leading up to our ceremony. And a big one here is caffeine and other stimulants. So, oh, this is another big one. I think that maybe this was like top of the top when it came to what people struggled with was obviously like coffee and things like that that are such a habit and 
trust me, I understand. This was a challenging one for me to wean off of in the time leading up to my ceremonies, but coffee is quite an acidic beverage. So really good to give your body and your digestive system a little bit of a break in the time leading up to your ceremonies. Salt and spices, oils, and if you need to use a little bit of oil here, I would say olive oil and coconut oil is okay, but do your best to really start to uh, release any oils from your diet. Obviously junk food, processed food, things like that. And then finally, this is not necessarily food, but just anything that is lowering your vibration. So in the week leading up to, or longer, right? If you can do this for longer than a week, beautiful, but definitely in the week leading up to your ceremony, start to really pay attention to the things and the people around you and how they are affecting your energy, right? So your relationships, your music that you listen to, television, social media, all of these different things, start to take a little bit of a break and a pause from anything that you notice is kind of bringing you down and really allow yourself to focus on and surround yourself by things that elevate your energy and really raise your vibration. So those are the foods that we want to go ahead and let go of, release from our diet, and just do your best here, okay? So I understand that it's a lot. I get that it can be overwhelming and we are human, we are not perfect. So don't stress yourself out if you are not following this to a T every single day in every moment leading up to your retreat. Just do your best, be patient with yourself, be gentle on yourself. You know, this is actually a really beautiful opportunity to be aware of how you treat yourself when it comes to your food and your diet. And are you being really hard on yourself? You know, are you judging yourself for the things that you eat? What kind of foods do you struggle to let go of? It's a beautiful opportunity to bring in more awareness around how you respond to yourself around your diet and different foods. So yeah, use it as an opportunity to become more aware and always to be gentle and kind to yourself. In terms of the food that you actually can eat, and <laughs> I understand at this point it might be like, can I eat anything? And yes, yes, you can. There's actually a lot of really beautiful, nourishing foods that you can eat with the ayahuasca diet. I'm not going to name every single one here that will be in the box below, but just really think about it as eating as clean and as whole food based as possible. Lots of amazing fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and whole grains, lentils, uh, really nice high quality proteins, fresh herbs and spices that aren't too stimulating, and of course drinking a lot of water to really hydrate you and help support your body in detoxifying before your ceremonies. And that is everything. I really, really hope that that helped. And keep in mind as well that it's important to follow a diet after your ceremonies. And it can be a little bit of a different approach, a little bit of a different time frame. So if you would like a video about the post ayahuasca diet, let me know. I'm happy to share that as well and dive into that a little bit more. But otherwise, this is everything that you need to know for the diet leading up to your ayahuasca ceremony. And just remember here that ayahuasca is a really, really powerful plant medicine. And it's best to just go into this situation, go into your ceremonies with respect, with dedication to the medicine, and also just dedication to yourself and dedication to your own healing. Be proud of yourself, respect yourself for everything that you are doing, for your commitment to your own healing. It is incredible and you really should be supporting yourself as much as possible. And again, just be gentle with yourself. We are human. We are going to mess up at times. That's absolutely okay. So just do your best and be so, so proud of yourself for how far you have already come. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more information. I share new videos like this every single week on topics around ayahuasca, but also just around holistic healing, intentional living, wellness, and spirituality. So thank you, thank you again for watching all the way until the end of this video, and I will see you in the next one.